elections are one of the pillars of democracy. If they are free and fair, they reflect the will of the people. Unfortunately, in many countries, election processes are flawed, the electoral playing field is not level, and incumbents can use loopholes to rig elections. This means that the results of elections are often violently disputed. To prevent this, the Southern African Development Community, or SADC, developed a series of election guidelines in 2004. It included a provision for observer missions to check whether countries are, in fact, following the rules. The problem with these observation missions was that they would arrive in the country a few days before the polls and leave straight after the results were announced. It was therefore impossible for them to check whether the run-up to the elections had gone smoothly. Was there freedom of speech? Was the media independent? Could opposition leaders campaign freely? Another concern is that these missions are made up of government officials and their final reports are not made public. The new 2015 guidelines aim to address these concerns. There are eight main differences. Firstly, SADC now has a clear definition on the free and fairness of elections and how to measure it. Free elections means fundamental human rights and freedoms are adhered to, including freedom of speech and expression, freedom of assembly and association, and freedom of access to information and right to transmit them. Fair elections means electoral processes are conducted in conformity with SADC rules characterized by respect for the rule of law and there is no violence, intimidation or discrimination based on race, gender, ethnicity, religious or other considerations. Secondly, from now on, observer missions will focus on long-term engagement and spend up to three months in a country. Thirdly, the missions will also include members of civil society. Previously, they were exclusively made up of state officials. Fourthly, the new guidelines provide for an opportunity to review SADC election observation reports with all stakeholders, which is an opportunity to comment and learn from the report. The fifth innovation is that, this time around, there are provisions for sanctioning countries that clearly flout SADC's election guidelines. The SADC summit will determine the sanctions on a case-by-case -case basis. The new guidelines also stipulate that observers get clued up on e-voting systems. They also suggest that SADC countries consider including nationals living abroad. Finally, the guidelines are supposed to assist SADC to prevent and manage election-related conflicts through strategies that promote early warning and early action. Will this work? It all depends on whether SADC is able to get the funding required for such comprehensive missions, especially from member states. It will also require more trust between states and civil society organizations and real buy-in from the SADC members. The election guidelines are a big step forward for SADC. If implemented correctly, they could ensure that elections across the region will be more transparent, free and fair.